Hey guys, Andy Marcou here from CoachmansDelight.com and I want to talk to you today a little bit about turns and corners in your dressage test. Now, this is one of those places where people often get a little screwed up and it's really no surprise because when we look at the maps on the dressage test that come along with the dressage test, they have some pretty wacky things drawn out there. Now, the figures that they draw, they're mostly pretty accurate, but the way they draw the turns is absolutely off the charts kooky. Uh, you know, they draw these right angle turns that your horse could really only achieve if he was wearing point shoes. Now, if you're into that and your horse is into that, hey, I'm not here to judge, do your thing, but I'm just here to tell you that that's not how horses move. And this is really important because everything that you do with your horses in your corners and turns is setting up your horse's balance and his rhythm and his way of going throughout the dressage test. Here's the important thing to understand about driven dressage is that your horse should always be on two tracks, like a set of railroad tracks. So if the horse is on a turn and her right feet are on the right side of the arc of the turn and her left feet are on the left side of the arc of the turn, those feet should always track on their own side of the arc of the turn. So the right hind will always be following in the pathway of the right four. Left hind will always be following in the pathway of the left four. So if we try to drive the test the way it's drawn on the map and we bring that pony as absolutely deeply into the corner and try to make a right angle turn right there at C and then again at M going super deep into the corner, you're going to see that we're going to have a pretty significant loss of balance and a pretty significant crossing of the legs. So as she comes up really tight, oop, the pony asks a couple of questions about which way they're going and then she takes it right into the corner and it gets really tight. As we watch the turn taken too deep to the right, we can really see that loss of balance. Pila ends up leaning over hard into the turn, and then we can see her hind feet crossing inside of the tracks of her front feet. This is not what we're looking for in our turns. In order to keep your pony on two tracks, the trick is to take all of your corners and turns as a quarter of a circle. Now, how big of a quarter of a circle should you do? Well, that's going to depend somewhat on the size of your pony and the level that you're driving. Now, if we're looking at a large pony like Pila or a horse driving at the training or the preliminary levels, that quarter of a circle should be about 20 meters in width, right? So it should be a quarter of a 20 meter circle. Uh, how do we find out what is a quarter of a 20 meter circle? If the radius of your 20 meter turn goes is 10 meters, that means as you're approaching C, you should start that quarter circle from 10 meters from C, which is also G. And then that turn should bring you around to the quarter line, which is halfway between the center line and the corner of the arena. Let's take a look at what those figures look like. And we're gonna start with that training prelim uh, quarter circle plus the quarter circle to make the track right at C. So Kathy, if you could, uh, we can take this at the trot and just trot up to G. So look to your left and right and really keep your eyes open for the G and nice arc to the quarter line, carrying that outside rein, and a nice arc to M, carrying that outside rein, and now we get straight to go down the long side. That was really nicely done. Now, 
When would we change from doing a 20 meter half circle uh, to a smaller half circle? Well, there are two sets of circumstances. Number one, if we went up a level to say intermediate level, maybe we'd be doing about an 18 meter quarter circle to get to the rail, or we would um, do a smaller quarter circle if we were driving a much smaller horse. So maybe if we were out here with, you know, somebody more in the 12 to 13 hand range, because when you have a 12 or 13 hand pony, well, they're not as long from their head to the tail as a full size horse. So they're typically able to sustain moving on two tracks with a little bit more ease. So what that means, Kathy, is that you, when you're going to be trying this half circle for me, we're going to come up to G and you're going to go about one meter past G before starting that arc and we want to arrive at the short side of the arena about one meter before the quarter line. So we're going to come up just about a step and then start that turn and then a moment of straightening and then arriving just before the box before M. That's actually pretty good, Kathy. All right, let's go ahead and really challenge Kathy here and talk about the advanced level turn. If you're driving your large pony or horse at the advanced level, you're gonna be asked for 15 meter circles when you're doing your tests. So it's very easy to surmise that a 15 meter circle would be the same radius, the same type of quarter circle that you'd be taking to track right at C. So 15 meters divided by two equals seven and a half meters. So we're gonna go about two and a half meters, really just a step or two beyond G, and then to the middle of the second rail after C, a little straightening here, looking to M, there we go. Hey Kathy, that's not too bad at all. Good job. The geometry that we just worked out for your corners and tracking left, turning off of the center line, turning onto the center line, all work just exactly the same when we're asked to change direction from B to E, or maybe in uh, prelim test four, you have to go down to F and make a right turn to D. Uh, and just like the corners, the maps are really, really misleading. The maps come all the way up the long side and all of a sudden they draw a right angle turn. And what that leads to is people trotting down the long side of the arena, waiting until the absolute last moment because they feel like they have to get their pony's head here at B and then they, boom, take a big fast turn like they're starting a lawnmower or something like that and try to get that horse to all of a sudden all in one move turn on to this line between B and E. Now that doesn't work because number one you have a huge loss of balance. Number two you have a huge interruption of energy and flow in your movement. And number three you'll inevitably when you're trying to use that strategy go beyond the line between B and E. When you've been asked to cut across the arena between B and E, what your job is, is to get on the line between B and E and get nice and straight as you're going across X to E. Uh, and the way to do that is to apply the same geometry that we worked on at the C end of the arena right here to this end of the arena. So you start about 10 meters before B, finish the turn, on the quarter line and now we have 20 meters of straight driving to do. Just nice straight as an arrow across X to the other quarter line and we'll make a nice left hand turn and actually arrive at the other long side of the arena about 10 meters to the left of E. So Kathy let's pick up a trot and see if we can make this happen. Begin, allow, show her straight, good, look for your quarter line, 
Ah, and you might have started that a bit early, eh? So there you go. Hopefully that's a better explanation of how you should be doing your corners and turns in the arena. Uh, and now I know right now you're, what you're probably wondering is, Andy, is this written down anywhere? Well, I got all of the teaching that I just gave you out of a book from, called The Manual for Driven Dressage. This was published by the American Driving Society about 20 or 30 years ago. Unfortunately, that book is now out of print. However, I've put all of this down in some really nice exercises that I'm going to give as a free handout with next week's class called Guided Tour of Dressage. Beyond corners and turns, we're going to talk about diagonals, rhythm, pace, and I'm going to share with you the coaching that I give my personal students before they go out and do their dressage tests. We're going to take a look at two specific dressage tests, the preliminary four and the training four. Uh, so that's going to be a really interesting class, and you're going to get the handout that explains all of this with the class. Uh, don't worry about it if you can't be there Tuesday night at 9 p.m. my time. I'm on the East Coast uh, because if you sign up for the class, you'll get a recording of the class and all of the materials in a link in an email the day after the class. So you won't actually miss a thing. You'll be able to download that video to your computer and download all of those materials to your computer so you can look at them at any time that you want. So I guess Kathy and I are probably going to go work on some more dressage since we finally have our dressage ring set up. Uh, I'm Andy Marcoux from CoachmansDelight.com and I really appreciate you being with me. Oh, one more thing. If you look down there somewhere, there's a subscribe button. Go ahead and click it. If you like this video, you'll get more videos like it from me when I put them up here on YouTube. And please, by all means, if you have somebody in your life that you think would benefit from seeing this video, go ahead and share it. You know what? Just share it anyway. Share it on your Facebook page or your Twitter or your Tumblr or I don't know, whatever social media you're using so that other people can find out how to drive their corners and turns and dressage as well. All right. Thanks a lot. I'll see you soon sometime online or in the field. Take care.